what can I tell you about postpartum depression versus the baby blues? Well, baby blues will happen any time in the first two weeks where you cry and you don't know why you're crying. And um, you also will feel like um, just, at, I mean, all the commercials you're crying at, your, your partner could be walking in the room and he can find you in tears and you don't even know why. That's more of the baby blues. It just feels like all the emotions of delivering and going through that situation has finally come to the surface. Totally normal, ladies. I've been there. I, I don't even have the baby blues and that happens to me sometimes. So, but it really, that's how we know it's kind of the baby blues is because it's, it manifests in the first couple of weeks and then it goes away. That's the good news. I would say the statistics say 80% of new moms experience this, these baby blues. And, um, and it is, it's just a pass. Just get taste, just take loving care of yourself. Drink some water, go lay down. Sleep when the baby sleeps, which when you're having the baby blues, that could be a little difficult because of just, again, these emotions and these hormones are kind of competing with one another and you don't know what's the hormones and what's the emotion and what's real and what's not. So just expressing it, just knowing that it's going to get better because it does. Now, the postpartum depression happens in about 10% of women. But if you're one of those 10%, you don't want to be. Because that 10% can be really, it is so difficult. And when we are having, experiencing postpartum depression, it could be the opposite where you're either eating too much or you're eating too little. You're not sleeping. You could be sleeping all day or you could be not sleeping hardly a wink, which is just going to make that depression get worse. You also think in your mind, I can do this. I should be able to do this. I just birthed a baby. A baby just came out of my vagina. Why can't I get it together? I see a lot of other women go, I'm a college educated woman and this baby is kicking my butt. You know, and ladies, and that's normal. That happens. You feel that this little baby comes in your life and you really feel that, oh, it's just going to be so wonderful and joyous. No, it, it, it isn't. Not for every mom. And, and I would say for a lot of the women, we don't want to admit it. But it's true. It can be very, very frustrating at times with the lack of sleep. Lack of sleep is is a torture uh as a means of torture and and it wears on you and so you almost if you're at the point where you literally feel you are going nuts so it's time to get some intervention and and maybe even way before then a lot of us women again feel like i can handle it i i can i can i can totally do this and then but then everything's falling apart, which is going to make you fall apart. And this is this continuous cycle. And one of the things that you're going to know the difference is because postpartum depression does not go away in a couple of weeks. Postpartum depression can actually manifest anytime. And that first 12 months of postpartum, yeah, joy, right? And so if you're finding yourself feeling a little bit better and then you're starting to feel like you're losing it again, it's also possibly a warning sign that you might need to get some help. I promise you, for those that get help, it, there is help. And, it, and it, you do have a 90% success rate with getting the right help for you. Now, I'll say, I'll hear like, Julie, I'm not going to go on antidepressants. I'm nursing. Well, guess what? Being on antidepressants is totally compatible with breastfeeding. There are not any studies out there that's going to say, oh, this is wrong. You can't do this. And plus... Your baby deserves a mom who's happy. Your baby deserves for his mom or her mom to be able to take care of them. And they're going to pick up on that if your emotions are getting out of control. And, and sometimes the longer we go, the more it's going into biochemistry. And there is not going to be much help until we do get you on 
an antidepressant. And a lot of people are against that. Get over it. Um, your baby deserves a mom. Your husband deserves a wife. And, and, and with, when it comes to antidepressants, it does take a little bit of time for them to work. You also need to figure out which one's going to be the best for you. No, let's just say, heck no, you're not going to take it, and, and you want to wait it out. Well, again, there's, it's part of the depression speaking, and anxiety coming in, and coming into play of things, and saying, oh, you know, maybe we don't need, you know, maybe it's just still going to get better. I could be able to beat this. I beat, you know, I beat it before. I can beat it again. Your body takes 12 months to get back to normal, get back in those hormones to work effectively again. Why would you want to wait 12 months of your baby's life when you can actually get help now? And I don't want anybody to suffer. And again, you feel like, again, it's part of the anxiety, part of the depression. You feel like you can beat it. That's, that's even all the more time to maybe get some help. Now, for those of you who are again saying, I'm not doing it, I'm not going on antidepressants, I don't care what Julie says, then fine. Then I want you to call up a counselor. I want you to call up somebody specifically who can help you with postpartum depression. They're not all going to be able to help you. So if you're in the Salt Lake City area or the Utah County, I'm in Utah for those of my clients, and that's where most of my clients are based out of. The Healing Group, Kristen Hobson, Tara Tolley. Then in Utah County are um, with the healing group. These ladies are specifically, and then there's more ladies in the group, they're specifically there for postpartum mood disorders. And when you are depressed and anxious and having all these other warning signs, it's called a postpartum mood disorder, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. Let me share a little bit about myself. Meet Hi, I'm Julie, and I had postpartum depression with my first son. I literally knew what it felt like and what it, what others would be, what they would be going through if they were wrapped up in a straitjacket, hauled off to the funny farm. I would not sleep. I uh, wasn't why why go to sleep when my newborn son was just going to wake up two three hours later, and I had. You know, so why even go to sleep at all? Mm-hmm. So, um, didn't want to eat. Couldn't. And girl, I love to eat, and I could not get. I, I just didn't even have an appetite. And, gee, I wish that was my problem now. Um, but and then, so I wasn't sleeping. Seriously, I would be dreading. the The word is dread. I dreaded the night. Ten o'clock would roll around, and I just start to cry. I, I remember this. It was almost 19 and a half years ago. And it still, to this day, was not a place where I would wish my worst enemy on. It, it's a very lonely, lonely place to be. And, and I'm telling you, help is out there. And so I was also hyper vigilant with, vigilant with my baby. I was afraid to put him anywhere away from me and fear that something might happen that I was in constant fear at all times that he was going to die. I mean, granted he was early, granted, but he got the okay and the checked out by the doctor and I would take him into the doctor, <sighs> bless my doctor's heart, every week to make sure that, is there anything wrong? You know, can we make sure that he's okay? He's gotta be okay. And then I can last another week. She had even um, suggested my pediatrician to have an apnea machine at home just because I had such great fears. Her nurse would call me weekly. I'm not going to say that that's going to happen with your pediatrician, especially because now she's moved away. But she's not in the area anymore. Um, but I will never forget that 19 and a half years ago of what she did for me and how she understood what I was going through. But what really helped was I finally went and got some help. I, I found a postpartum depression support group, which I believe is no longer in the area, but there are out there. Actually, the healing group has them. Never mind, I forgot. So yes, and they've just they're uh, they've been around for a few years, and so um, there is now one with the healing group. And so I encourage you also to get involved with 
um, and calling them up as well. And again, there, there's other groups out there, but again, the Hanley group is who I'm affiliated with, um, or at least not affiliated with, but who I really refer out to. And I really encourage you to do so, because I know how it feels. And, and I do too. I know it gets better. I know it, it does. I promise you, promise you, it gets better. And it does, and it will. So you can enjoy your baby. So you can enjoy your life with your husband and be a family the way you've always wanted to. Now, I know this is going a, a little bit longer than I wanted, but it's also a big topic that I really feel is necessary for, for people to know and to understand. Again, it doesn't go away as easily, and you may need to get some psychological help as well as being on an antidepressant or something really, really natural under the care of, another, of a physician so they can help you balance your hormones and balance your biochemistry as soon as possible. Don't waste another day feeling like you are in prison because this depression and this anxiety puts you into that category. And then again, you feel even more crazy. Um, I am a char you know, I, I'm, I have a ba bachelor's degree in family science. I was going to go into early childhood education. I was going to be a marriage and family therapist. I was going to, and I, and I worked at a daycare. I knew all about kids. I babysat a lot. So here I am, a college educated woman. I was 25, been married for three years. So things were a little stable at that time. And the baby kicked my butt. And I hear that a lot. And a lot of women don't want to admit that it is. And a lot of babies who are, um, excuse me, a lot of women who are older, and they did not expect this to happen either, Those, especially with those who really had infertility issues. And then this baby's kicking their butt. You can only imagine how they feel. So they feel like they're stupid, and they're not. It's just your crazy freaking hormones. So get some help. Call the healing group. If you're out of Utah and you're one of my clients, then there is somebody, I swear to you, that you that you're, maybe your pediatrician or your OB is going to know that you can go specifically to to get that support. You deserve it. Motherhood is supposed to be a happy time. It usually isn't always 100% happy, but what we can do is this, and that is to get the help as soon as possible. So I... I pray that if you're in this situation, that things are going to get better. They will. I want you to mark my words. They will. Julie says it will get better. And I mean it. It happened for me. I never, I didn't feel dread with the other two when I've had other pregnancies. I did not experience it. And, and working with somebody and getting all those hormones worked out is going to be the best gift you can give yourself and your baby so start now pick up the phone get some help and also one other tip that this is for any mom who's still listening is get out of the house get out of the house every day do you hear get out of the house I don't know how many words that is even if you have to go in your backyard get the sunshine on your face but you have also got to talk to somebody every day and, and get out and make it a normal, you know, get a routine going out as fast as you can. Staying at home and in your bedroom under the covers isn't going to help, even though that's how what you feel like. So fake it until you make it. Get out of the house, even if it's to the mall or to a friend's house, your mom's house, and especially your therapist. So... I, this is Julie Johnson wishing you happier days, and, and it does, it gets better, it gets better, it gets better. So, um, hang in there, I know how it's like, and definitely call me if you are still needing some support, and also it's really common to want to quit breastfeeding, 
And when you want to quit breastfeeding, you feel like that's going to be the end of uh, the depression or the anxiety, and that's not always true. There's also a correlation, and I know we're getting really far out here with this message, but there's also a correlation with some birth trauma, with nipple trauma, and feeling like you're going crazy. So definitely give me a call. I know what it's like, and I'm actually starting a little bit of some study on that very same thing. So I'm here to support you.